this is Professor Mike Bernacki of the University of Detroit Mercy, uh, in for another podcast, podcast 26. Uh, and today is uh, May 12th, uh, 2015. I'd like to thank partners, Immersive Engineering, Oakland Schools, and University of Detroit Mercy. Thank you for your uh, cooperation and your coordination. So anyway, today's podcast is going to follow the script, basically, of Under the Microscope, Volume 25, Issue 37. So I'd ask you please to print it out and make that available. And this scope was done uh, a week ago, as a matter of fact, May 5th, 2015. And it's entitled Summer Blockbuster Special. So what we usually do before summer movies start or as summer movies are starting, we present the 20 or 25 movies that are predicted to be the uh, biggest summer movies. And we've done that again this year. It's our delight to be able to do it. So I'd ask everybody to please take a look at the table, which is table one called the Summer 2015's Tremendous 20 Estimated Blockbusters. You see on the left-hand side, Uh, We have the uh, date that the movie uh, opens, the title of the movie, the genre of the movie, the studio, production budget, domestic uh, box office projection in millions of dollars, foreign box office uh, projection in millions of dollars, and the percentage that it comes from the foreign box office. And the shaded part, we give movie DNA, and that is, were there movies before this? Is this a sequel, prequel, what's going on? The domestic box office uh, of that or those that belong in the DNA, those movies, uh, the foreign box office, the worldwide box, easy mathematical uh, uh, issue here, and that's we just add the two, and then the percentage that was foreign. So you have an idea. We have history and the movie in the making, no doubt about it. So let's take a look and see what we can find before we go and read some of the microscope's uh, wording itself. We see that the first big movie of the summer uh, opened, uh, appropriately enough, May 1st. By the way, if you didn't know it, you should, that the summer movie season is a four-month season, May, June, July, and August. Anything before really doesn't count. May 1st, what movie opened? Of course, Avengers 2 opened. Uh, It's a... Uh, action adventure movie, Buena Vista Studio, uh, production budget two hundred and fifty million, domestic box office projected six hundred and fifty million, and the percentage of that expectation is sixty six percent will be uh, will be uh, foreign box office. If you take a look at these twenty movies that we have, uh, you will see different foreign percentages, of course, what the expectation happens to be. So what I would like you uh, to notice, among the things I'd like you to notice, is take a look at the comedies. And um, we've got, uh, let's see, Pitch Perfect 2 is a comedy, uh, Aloha is a comedy drama, Spy is comedy, Entourage is a comedy, Ted 2 is a comedy, uh, Magic Mike Double XL is a comedy drama, Trainwreck is a comedy. Uh, Pixels is a uh, action uh, feature that is uh, comedic as well. If you take a look at those and if you average their percentage that belongs to the foreign box office, that percentage is only 43%. Now, this is not a weighted percentage based upon the box office. It's just straight percentage, 43%. Well, wait a minute. If we go down to the end of that column, percentage of foreign box, you'll see that the overall percentage is 62%. So what happens to uh, comedies? Comedies do not do as well overseas as they do in the U.S. Why is that? Well, because uh, comedy very often is culturally based. It's language-based. Not everything translates well. If you're going to do a comedy and want it to be a big uh, global hit, you should probably do it in a number of foreign countries and make sure it translates well in those uh, countries. So that's the story. So let's get on um, with this table, and we'll take a look at uh, Avengers 2, because that occupy a lot of our time, that's for sure. 
Avengers 2, uh, as we mentioned, uh, projected foreign box $1,250 uh, million, dollars, uh, in other words, $1 billion, 250 bucks. domestic box 650 for a grand total perhaps of uh, $1.9 billion. That's with a B, as a matter of fact. What do we know about uh, this movie? Well, we know right now that its box office uh, is about uh, 33% total box office to date is about 33% domestic, 67% foreign. Uh, that's a certainly good showing foreign, but guess what? It's going to get bigger because it opens in China today. China, uh, if not the biggest movie market now, it certainly will be uh, next to the USA, and it's only going to get bigger, matter of fact, if years go on. So you can take a look at the China box office when it comes rolling in, and you know after weeks one and week two, uh, the domestic box office has pretty much rolled its, uh, uh, you know, rolled its load, and certainly there's going to be more. But if we take a look at what has gone on, as a matter of fact, right now, uh, the first domestic box office weekend was over 91 million dollars. Uh, it slowed uh, to only 60 percent of that. Still, the second biggest opening ever, second biggest second week ever. Uh, next to what movie? Of course, Avengers 1. That's next to what movie. So uh, we can see, though, the decline is precipitous, and that's an awful large decline. We say that if a movie only does 50% decline, it's going to continue to score very well. 60% decline, no matter if, even if the number is big, uh, shows that it doesn't quite have the connection that I think uh, folks figured it would have. It will always be, though, always be until some surpasses it. Certainly it will be the second biggest opening ever, probably the second biggest box office uh, domestic ever, and more than likely the second or maybe even the biggest uh, total box office, both foreign and domestic, because China, remember, is still coming. So this is interesting stuff. And if you take a look, Avengers 1 has the biggest prediction, followed by Minions. That is uh, opens on the 10th of July. It's expected uh, worldwide box is 900. Jurassic World uh, 612 <coughs> opens uh, June 12th, 775 predicted. Fantastic Four, another superhero movie, 700 uh, million. And... On uh, the uh, 31st of uh, July, uh, $650 million expected worldwide box uh, to Michigan Impossible 5. What do we notice about these five movies? Avengers, Minions, Jurassic World, Fantastic Four, and Mission Impossible 5. What is that? That's right. They're all sequels, ladies and gentlemen. Why do sequels keep being successful? Why aren't there more new movies? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because they draw. People want to see them. They understand the brand. They understand the storyline. This is a big deal, not a small deal. And if uh, folks don't want sequels and prequels, well, guess what? They won't go to them. Having said that, the data say they do go to them. Um, so now I'm going to read for the scope from the scope uh, with the time I have left, and we're probably over eight minutes right now, uh, close to ten. So the next four or five minutes or so, uh, I'm going to be reading from the scope so you can follow along. Summer is a blockbuster season. In each of the last eight years, the first full weekend in May features a superhero superhero blockbuster success. So there's a formula. Superhero in each of the nine years counting this year. Well, eight years before, nine years now. 2015 with Avengers 2, of course, makes it nine. Uh, it is packed with star-studded cast with Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Johansson, Samuel L. Jackson, just to name a few. Domestically, we predict the Avengers, and everybody else predicts, it's just going to crush last year's superhero movie that opened the summer the Amazing Spider-Man 2. It only did $203 million only. That's a sensational box office. 
and it beat its predecessor, by the way, by 4%. Uh, that's Spider-Man 1. Well, it doesn't look like Avengers 2 is going to beat its uh, predecessor, Avengers uh, uh, Predator, uh, Avengers 2 is going to beat its predecessor, Avenging One, Avengers 1, but it's going to be uh, very big, that's for sure. By the way, another way to look at movies, which ones are the most profitable? Well, if you can invest $25 million and get out uh, $400 million total box office, that is for the production budget, production costs, good luck. Uh, we do have, though, the biggest box office, uh, the biggest ratio of production budget to projected success uh, unusually is the biggest movie of the summer. The Avengers 2, production budget healthy of $250 million. But if you get $1,900,000,000 from it, you've got a ratio of 7 to 1, ladies and gentlemen. There are some 5 to 1 ratios. Production budget, or I should say total box to production budget. Among those, you'll see Jurassic World, 5 to 1. Fantastic Four, five to one, and Man from Uncle, five to one. Okay, enough of that. Let's roll on. The Avengers will not be the only sequels you meant to hit the silver, silver screen this summer. An astounding 50% of our estimated summer blockbusters, the 20 that we have on that table, uh, uh, are sequels, reboots. And by the way, uh, Blockbuster is a $100 million movie, so it's a, really a technical term. The percentage in not all those movies are going to do $100 million domestically, that for sure. And if I take a look, do they all do uh, in total box? I guess they all do at least that. Okay, so anyway, that percentage inflates to 60% if you count Entourage and The Man from UNCLE, both of which are based on TV shows of the same name. They, so to speak, are TV sequels. While some of us may see sequels, reboots, etc., as a representation of Hollywood's lack of creativity, we mentioned that just a few minutes earlier, it's hard to deny that the ultimate box office results would count. The previous installments of this summer's blockbusters, are you ready for this, have grossed over $4 billion domestically. A few weeks ago, the seventh installment of Fast and the Furious franchise sat atop weekly box office data for the fourth straight week uh, as it became the fourth biggest global box office, $1.4 billion ever, with a good chance of becoming number three. Wow, Hollywood will stop churning out sequels when they stop making money. They're back. This summer also seems to be the time for those comeback flicks. Four movie franchises are coming back this summer. Two of them are from the 80s and two are from the 90s. Mad Max goes the furthest to 19, furthest back to 1980. There were three films between 1980 and 1985. Next, The Terminator, Terminator uh, for the first, was released for the first time in 1984. Arnold did say that he would be back, and from 84 to 09, 2009, he returned four times. Then everyone's favorite dinosaurs are returning to terrorize the planet. Jurassic Park's first three films were box office behemoths between 1993 and 2001. Refer to those data on the table on the first page. Then finally, the Mission Impossible franchise, the brand, is rebooting again with lead man Tom Cruise, uh, who will be saying, uh, will be saving the day for the fifth time since 1996. We wonder if Hollywood is out of ideas or just doesn't need uh, to break what isn't broken. Outside of Mad Max, all of the other three franchises are one billion movie brands. The latest Mission Impossible 2011 grossed almost 700 million worldwide. We note, however, that the most recent Jurassic Park film was the worst of the series, uh, grossing three flicks, and Terminator was the second worst in the four-part franchise, this time around the dance floor for the aforementioned movie. We are challenging whether Renew and Redo is a sound box office strategy or are the dropping dollars a signal to pitch and ditch 
the sequel's prequel, prequel. The declining box within each of the above franchises may single, signal their last dances. But remember, that applies to those movies and not to all movies. But we now have enough time in this podcast. This is Mike Bernanke from the University of Detroit Mercy. We're saying there's one more paragraph to read from the scope on Summer Holidays 2015 are more like hardly days for flicks. Please read that to get the finish on it as it deals with holiday movie making and releasing. Again, we'll see you next podcast, which will be podcast 27. Thanks for listening. So long.